Yo, what is up, YouTube? Lee the Captain here, and I believe that Arbitrum's governance token called Arb is going to shock the world during the next bull run and hypothetically at least go to the price of $50 and during the process make all of those Arbitrum critics come running over to their girlfriend's boyfriend's grandma and start begging for that used and rusted Bratwurst Extender Taylor Swift Edition. If you know, you know. And of course, being Taylor Swift Edition, it's not even made out of titanium. What is that all about? But yeah, besides that point, a major reason why I think that could hypothetically happen is the fact that I do think that Arbitrum has fantastic a fundamentals. And of course, this isn't financial advice, but when I take a look at Arbitrum, I think it's fantastic. What it is, is that it is a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum. And what this means right here is that users can use Arbitrum's chains to quite essentially do all the things that they originally could do on Ethereum. For instance, such as using Web3 applications, deploying smart contracts, and many others, while all at the same time being able to enjoy faster transaction speeds and also transactions that are far cheaper. You know, that's how amazing Arbitrum is. And as we all know, Ethereum, gas fees, they're no joke. They're absolute caca in my opinion. And no, I'm not talking about Kaka, the soccer player, I'm talking about the Kaka that actually stinks. That's how bad Ethereum's gas fees is. And with that being said, some people, they may be wondering, what is the benefit of a layer two scaling solution, much like Arbitrum? And to answer that question, I'm going to harp back on what I just said previously. And that's the fact that I think that Ethereum has somewhat of a fundamental compromise because on top of just nonsense gas fees that are absolutely ridiculous, Ethereum in its current form is actually not scalable. You know, even despite being Ethereum 2.0, even despite being proof of stake, Ethereum, again, it lacks scalability. Even according to Charles Hoskinson, who, by the way, is the founder of Cardano, but also he's the co-founder of Ethereum, you know, according to him, he predicts that it may take Ethereum up to five more years to become scalable. I mean, what is that all about? That's just way too long. That's complete nonsense. How is a layer one blockchain like Ethereum still not scalable in this day and age? That's crazy. Insane. Carayo. Poha. That's not good in my opinion. However, through Arbitrum, all these nonsense issues, they're quite essentially gone. And that's how amazing Arbitrum is. And that's why I think there is a need for a layer two scaling solution, much like Arbitrum. I think it serves such a fantastic purpose. And here's the thing, Arbitrum, they have amazing statistics as of right now, because as of December 1st, it has been able to save 1.73 million ETH. I mean, that's crazy. Also, it has over 600,000 active wallets. It has over $8 billion in total value lock. And it even has over 50% market share in the layer two market. Carayo, again, that's crazy. And it doesn't end there though, because it currently has been able to facilitate over half a billion transactions. I mean, man, that right there makes me want to go ahead and take a shower and take a shower in a good way because I've already taken a shower, but reading those stats right there makes me want to take another shower because it's that exhausting and exhausting in a good way. Much like the boom boom in the bedroom. No one ever complains about being exhausted there, right? Much like reading the stats right here. If you catch my drift, that's what she said. However, yeah, besides that point, I think that a major catalyst, which could very well allow Arbitrum's governance token called ARB to hypothetically attain the price of $50 during the next bull run, is the fact that I do think that the next bull run could be so legendary. And why is that? It's because currently, we have more people than ever before in history owning cryptos. Which is not a joke, by the way, because when you compare it to 2021, during that insane bull run, at that time, there was actually over 100 million less crypto owners than today. And yet, still even despite that, the bull run that year looked that legendary. So you gotta imagine what the next bull run will look like, especially now that we have this many people owning cryptos. I mean, man, during the next bull run, I think that the altcoin season could really dwarf the altcoin season that we saw back in 2021. Even though 2021 was already impressive, I think the best is yet to come. And with that being said, some people out there, they may think that, oh, you know, ARB going to the price of $50, what are you on about? They think, oh, that's crazy. But here's the thing. Considering its current circulating supply, if R were to go to the price of $50, it would have a market cap of around $63 billion. And now when I say this, some people, they may be jumping off of their seat because they may be saying, whoa, that's insane. Around $63 billion. But you got to take this into consideration. 
this market cap right here is actually over $20 billion less than Dogecoin's all-time high market cap. So you got to let that sink in, right? And now when I say this, some people, they may say, it's not fair to compare Doge to something like ARP because Doge, it does have more holders, more fans, more hype. I totally understand that. But the reason why I use this comparison is because I want to showcase how reaching over $60 billion in market cap in the world of cryptos is not uncharted territory. Because again, we've seen a meme coin far exceed this market cap in the past. So I don't think ARP going to around a $63 billion market cap is uncharted territory. You know, if I'm saying ARB is going to go to a $1 trillion market cap or something crazy like that, then yeah, I understand why that's ridiculous. But around $63 billion, it's not too much to ask for in the world of cryptocurrencies, in my opinion, especially when we consider just how special ARB is and also when I consider just how insane the next bull run could potentially be. And with that being said, that is why I am constantly dollar cost averaging into ARB I am ignoring what happens to the price in the short to medium term, and I'm just continuing to accumulate on a consistent basis on a set schedule over an extended period of time. Anytime I earn any sort of income, I set aside some for ARP because I believe in its long-term future, and I think that it's going to surprise a lot of people during the next bull run. You know, I'm not a day trader. I don't swing trade. I don't use leverage. I don't do any of that type of nonsense whatsoever. I like to keep it simple. I'm just slowly but surely accumulating more and more. And by doing so, I think that I'm preparing myself for the next bull run in such a fantastic way. I can't wait for the next bull run. And it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if ARP during the next bull run did hypothetically at least go to the price of $50 and during the process make all of those arbitrum critics come running over to their girlfriend's boyfriend's grandma and this time actually start begging for that titanium bratwurst extender Taylor Swift edition. If you know, you know. I think Arb is a sleeping giant. That's what she said. And if you want to check out a very interesting video, make sure to go ahead and click on this thumbnail right here. It's a very fantastic video, and I think you all would really love it. It's been Lee the Captain, and I'll catch you all on the next one. I'm out. Peace. Bye.